Thank you. Good day, everybody. My name is Martin Fabel. I'm a partner leading uh, AT Carney's global strategy practice out of Dubai. Dubai, that's the wannabe Singapore um, from uh, the Gulf, you know that. Um, my colleagues, some of them here in the room, asked me to come over to do some lunch entertainment for you. I'm probably the worst choice you could have for that, so I'm very, very lucky that I think most of you are done with your main course already and you have the sweet dessert in front of you. So I don't need to be uh, that funny. What I would like to do with you today um, is talk a bit about strategy, how business, how competitive strategy has been evolving over the years and where it's next, which is why we call it the future of strategy. Strategy is not that old as a profession. Uh, we all know it. Um, you know, in the beginning of the last century, it was all about creating monopolies, um, much more than really having a competitive strategy. Competitive strategy started very much in, in literature, if you want, in science with Michael Porter and his competitive forces. We call that the heydays of strategy. This is when it got taught at universities, when increasingly a number of books were written, etc. By the way, on this day today, 60 years ago, the Warsaw Pact was signed as a treaty amongst the Eastern European communist countries around the Soviet Union. That was probably not only the heydays of strategy, that was the heydays of the secrecy of strategy. Everything was very secret in the times of the Cold War. The next phase of strategy, and you will see in a minute why, is very opposite, is very inclusive, um, not that much secret anymore. Why is that? Because after these heydays of strategy came a phase towards the end of the last century, of the last millennium, where there were just too many business phenomenons to cope with. No longer we were able to do strategies in an ivory tower environment, you know, secretive boardroom environment, and then roll it out across the organization. Why not? Because companies, you know, the internet was there, globalization was there, we were spreading our value chains in and outsourced, back and forth. So many phenomena will dive into this. So strategy all of a sudden wasn't that easy anymore. And now how do we deal with this? You may have all perceived this. We deal with this in an inclusive way. And to be inclusive here today, I need to ask you to, and I think some of you, I don't know, you may have known this already, already have your smartphones in your hand. So this is an ask from me to you. Can you please all put out your smartphones in case you don't have? Open the browser, whatever browser you're using, I'm not making any any advertising here, probably it's Google. Okay, open your browser, in your browser, please key in www.atkvote.com. So go to that website. You're making progress so far? Everybody found that website? Somebody not found that website? Smartphones up? Okay, we'll have a good turnout today. So, then you should see a key field and you simply enter ABC 2015 as the login. Everybody there? Yes, 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 yes. I'm just trying to repeat this a bit here so we stir things up. All right. So, <clears throat> if you had logged in, um, let me go back. You went to the browser, you went through the login, done that, so you should all see now that first question. And at AT Kearney, we ran over the past two years a strategy survey with 2,000 executives from around the world. We asked them a couple of questions, and no worries, you don't need to go through 30 questions today, we just have five questions for you. But we would like to compare your view of how strategy as a tool, as a management tool, works for you with the results from the global survey. So, if you see that question, you have simply three options. So, strategy, has it become more difficult to formulate your strategy vis-a-vis -vis all these uncertainties, the volatility, the global phenomenon, the digitization, what have you, all of these things, has it become more difficult for you or is it easy as it was because the strategy needs a plan and we're good. So we already have 46, 48 votes, 49 and counting. I think that's probably good enough. 
Oh, I'm still going, still going. How many should we be here? How many votes? Probably more than that. <laughs> Anyways, we can build up. We can build up over time. We have more questions. So, let's look at the results. You're saying strategy has become more challenging. Okay, and so very. So the numbers are moving. If people are still making, you know, their their votes, uh, no worries. So you can still manipulate this a bit if you want. But um, the result is very clear. You find strategy has become more difficult. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Now that it is more difficult, um, have I given up on it? So I don't spend any time on strategy anymore? Or am I spending more time on formulating my strategy? How are you doing there? So A, I'm spending less time than before. B, it's about the same, kept me busy anytime, always. C, I'm spending more time on formulating my strategy than before. We have, we're nearing the 50 votes mark. That's probably good enough to go to the result. Okay, you're spending more time. So it has become more difficult and you're spending more time formulating your strategy. Let's quickly compare that, um, as I said, against our 2,000 executives globally um, that we interviewed. And the results are not that different. Um, they're different by a couple of percentage points, but more or less very much in sync. So, also there globally, two-thirds of the respondents said it's more challenging. And that is the reason why three out of four are saying we're spending more time on that. Now, more challenging, more time, does it work for us? Let's go to the next question. How often are you doing this? What is your strategy cycle? Um, are you doing strategy ad hoc? You know, a new competitor came in, uh, another market got disrupted, um, we have to refresh our strategy, so we don't have fixed cycles, we do it ad hoc. Whenever it's needed, we refresh our strategy. Or, on the opposite, that's a D, our strategies are, you know, cycle is way more than five years. We're in the steel business, we're in the utilities business, you know, we're putting up CapEx cycles, we're putting up a plant that has to, you know, run for 20 years. So this is why our strategy cycles are on that end. Seems a bit more challenging that question because the votes are piling up slower than before. 47, shall we, you know, Will we make the 50 mark? 48, can I have two more votes? Okay, can't. I give up. All right, so, oh, it's still moving. This is a challenging question, obviously. But um, I think interesting results. So, two thirds of you are saying, at least every other year, if not more often, if not even ad hoc, I'm refreshing my strategy. That probably explains why in the previous question you're spending so much time on it. So you're very busy dealing with strategy. Now, has this strategy cycle shortened compared to 10 years ago? Or are you trying to you know, avoid all this volatility by actually going for longer cycles? So has it always been two years and less? Was it five years before? Was it one year before? Has it A, shortened, B, stayed the same, C, lengthened? I need more votes. Whoever answered the previous question has to answer this question too. It's not possible to not answer it. Unless you just have started with strategy a year ago. That okay, would be fair. So all those who just started with strategy this year, not necessarily need to answer that question. Twenty-six votes, so we have a fifty percent. Ah, here we go. We're getting disrupted. Technology is after us. <laughs> okay, we're at forty-three votes. That's not too bad. I think we can move on. So, <clears throat> that your strategy cycles are two years and less is a result of those cycles having shortened over the past decade. Okay, that's probably not so much a surprise. And let's again compare that to the global results. Again, you're very much in line with those. Um, I think you have a higher share of refreshing your strategies ad hoc. So maybe the competitive dynamics 
in your region are already even higher than they are compared to global average. But again, two thirds are saying strategy cycles are two years and less. We have um, a colleague of ours has written a paper, I think a couple of years ago, uh, that was asking like, where have all the long-term strategies gone? I think we see the answer. Um, so, and yes, they're becoming shorter. So now, why all of this? Um, what's all this fuss, okay? So the key question is, is it still working for us? How satisfied are you with your strategies? A, my strategies exceed my expectations. B, on some fronts, C, you know, it does the trick, it meets our expectations. D, doesn't deliver on some fronts. E, fail broadly. 16 votes, 18, I need more. Twenty-seven, thirty. Can we give it a push? Okay, we move on to the result. So you're this is interesting. You're saying you're spending a lot of time on formulating strategy, more time than before, and it's not working for you. Strategies don't deliver on some front. 60%, the vast majority. How does that compare? The global results are very similar, but we have what we call a distinction between the top levels, the C-suite, and the middle management and their perception. So what you see here on the left side is the votes to the same question done by senior executives, the C-suite of the companies. And I call this a bit the leadership illusion. So here you have 45, 50% almost who are saying, my strategies exceed my expectations. Okay, that's fair because key part of their job is to formulate strategies and make them work. You go one level down in the organization, you ask the middle management, they look up and say, we're confronted with strategies. We have not been involved in their development. We feel they lack reality and they often don't work. And so, here you have a lot of organizational doubt. And with this, after quite some ramp up together with you, we're at the key hypothesis of our approach to strategy. You cannot make a strategy successful these days unless you involve those who later on should be tasked with execution. The question is how, how much, when, in what form, this is where the challenge sits, but that is one of the key theses. Um, I'll skip a couple of slides and I'll go straight to what we believe um, are the key pillars of a successful strategy going forward. So in this world of a lot of competitive dynamics, of trends and disruption that we did not have in the strategy heydays 50 years ago, you need three pillars to have in place to have an effective strategy that really works for you. First, we see a renaissance of tools like scenario planning, long-term trend analysis, strategic foresighting, stuff like that, to be more future in. The question is not inside out, outside in, which was an old debate in strategy. The question is really how much future in can we be? How can I anticipate the future and even bring in some design thinking? How can I shape the future that I want to be in with my company? The second point I think we touched a lot upon from cascading down a strategy, that was a traditional approach. So somewhere in the ivory tower it got formulated and then I have a couple of meetings, town hall meetings, and I'm cascading down my strategy. Simply, that doesn't work anymore. So you need to formulate it organizationally inclusive. And the third, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So the times of having one single sustainable competitive advantage, I'm a cost leader. I'm a quality leader. Those times are over. Today you gotta be faster, better, cheaper, more agile, everything at the same time. So once you build a new competitive advantage, you probably have to have another one in place that constitutes your superiority in your market today. So think of a life cycle there. And um, I'm not bothering you with the various tools and how to make this work and how to make this happen. I understand some of our books have been distributed, so there's probably good reading. Um, to do that, I would rather like to close 
with the last question. And I really apologize because I've been rushing through that, but I've been <coughs> seeing what happens to those who run over time, and I definitely don't want to go there. So the last question is, with these three pillars, make the strategy more future in. Spend more time at the beginning of your strategy development process to really think about future trends and try to embrace them before you go into number crunching and strategic planning and all of that. That is the first pillar. Do you think that one is most important for you vis-a-vis -vis how you're doing strategy today? Or number two, do you think organizationally inclusive is the key element? Which means maybe in the old days, I've been running a very secretive approach because strategy is about competitive advantage. If my competitor hears about the next competitive advantages that I'm going to build, he will imitate. And we see this, especially here in this market. We have a lot of world market leaders here out of Singapore. You have <coughs> Chinese players, even faster, even cheaper. And this is competitive threat to many of you. So, is this a problem? Do we need to stay secretive in order to maintain, protect and build competitive advantage? Or are we actually faster in our time to market? We fail less often in strategy execution if we build it, if we develop it much more inclusively from day one. And number three, the portfolio of competitive advantages. Don't, don't think of the single competitive advantage, but think of a portfolio. So which of those three my question to you, and 26 of you have given an answer already, the rest is busy with the dessert, I can see that. Which of these three pillars you think is most relevant for you and the company once you go back after this great day of networking you had here? So, I think the longer I talk, we're not getting the votes up, so probably we'll close with 27 here. Ho, 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 what do we do with this? <laughs> That's very interesting. So does that mean, can I, can I maybe have a statement out of the group? Does that mean they're equally important? You all had difficulties in choosing one and you had to make up your mind? Or is it just evenly distributed in this group? So what is your read? Or they all didn't make sense and so you had to press one button and just uh, net it out. So what do you think? They're all the same relevant? Can I see hands up, old technology? They're all equally relevant? Okay, you would like to know more about to make your choice which one is most relevant? Anyone for that? All right, then I think we just take it for the former. All right, that's very much it. Um, so what we're trying to, um, to do, and we're you know, happy to engage in, in a dialogue with you, um, post this presentation here, lots of the colleagues here around. Um, again, there's the book, you can read all of that. Um, but what we really think is that there is a new era in strategy being written. And not only by us, because some of our competitors are on the same track, just behind us, I have to say that. Um, but the key point is really that from the way strategy was done in the strategic heydays, where you were able to put the whole world just into a very big analytical spreadsheet, and then you were executing against it, those days are over. So that means strategy today need to have much more flexibility, need to have these three ingredients. It is still needed though. Some, some in literature even are saying agility has taken the place of strategy. I can't formulate strategies anymore because it's so difficult. As we've seen, as you said, and all I need to do is be very agile in my company. But we think that's not the case. Agility without strategy has no purpose and will take you anywhere, nowhere at the very end. So strategy is still absolutely required. With that, I'd like to close and thank you and hope you enjoy the coffee or whatever is next. <laughs>